Hello there, YouTubes. Firstly, little Rory Kent's there in the sun. Hey. Also, you might be thinking to yourself, why are you wearing a pink shirt, Kev? You look like a prat. And you'd be right. <laughs> Good evening everyone, Colonel Aldous Valor here with you once again, and uh, before we get into the video that I'm responding to, I want to, um, I want to talk about something that happened in the comments section of the same video, actually. Uh, because Kevin Logan has more subscribers than me, I can use his own logic and say that without a shadow of a doubt, that Kevin Logan's hate army of followers attacked me because I dared to stand up to a man. So this means that I'm entitled to $25,000, so if you could just send that to me, you know, quickly, then um, we can claim a huge victory for social justice. If you're interested in the, the specifics, many of them uh, claimed that I slandered Kevin Logan and that I libeled Kevin Slogan, and... Uh, the Logantologists using slander and libel interchangeably notwithstanding, uh, there's a few other things that they don't seem to understand about it. In order for Kevin Logan to make either a case for slander or libel, he would have to prove two things. He would first have to prove that I lied. He would then have to prove that my lies caused damage to his reputation in such a manner that a judge could accurately assign a dollar value to said damages because you can't sue for profit, you can only sue for restoration, to make you whole again. Now, there are two affirmative defenses to both slander and libel, the first of which being is that the defendant did not lie. When I said that Kevin Logan was a, a child rapist enabler, that might have been a poor choice of words. I probably should have phrased that a little bit better. Kevin Logan is a child rapist supporter, and I can prove this using some William Lane Craig deductive style reasoning. All right, here we go. Premise one, Kevin Logan supports the letter writing campaign. Premise two, one of the letter writers is a child rapist. Conclusion from one and two, Kevin Logan supports a child rapist. Now, many people didn't like this deductive reasoning, but the fact of the matter is that my conclusion is drawn from two premises. And as long as we accept that those premises are true, then the conclusion is inescapable. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not. The second affirmative defense to slander and libel is that the uh, plaintiff's reputation is already so low that nothing the defendant says could possibly damage it any further. Now really, the only way that I could damage his reputation in any, any measurable amount would be by reducing his view counts, thereby reducing his ad revenue. But because I link to every video of his that I respond to, I can actually make the argument that I'm increasing his, his hit count, and thereby benefiting his bottom line. You fuckers all need to understand something. I've been doing this for a lot of years. I know the difference between slander and libel, and I also know how to carefully select my words. So anyway, Kevin Logan released a video today, so let's get started. <laughs> Um, something that occurred to me the other day, which I sort of, I thought I'd share with you about the sort of recent trials and tribulations of uh, the you know, feminist social justice warrior um, community here on on the YouTubes. And while whilst things may not have been going perfectly, we shouldn't get upset or too downhearted about it all, really. Nope, don't worry about it. Your leadership has only been exposed as um, frauds and child rapists. Nothing to worry about. Because ultimately, um, it sort of encapsulated it in this story for me that was um, in the news a couple of days ago, where um, in Britain, in 2011, the government had put together, the British government that is, had put together a, um, a sort of plan of action or whatever, uh, and a target to have... 25% uh, of board members of the Financial Times Stock Exchange 100 companies, the, you know, the top 100 companies in the country, to have uh, them as, uh, to have 25% of the board be female. 
Right. That's a great idea. Let's just set a target, and we'll worry about finding qualified people later. Um, and they've surpassed that, actually. It's now 26.1%, which might not seem like much, but when they set that goal in 2011, they, um, the actual number was only something like 12.1% or something. Which is actually twice as good as the female-to-male ratio at Laughing Witches Company. In four years, in the four, in the four years since um, they set that target, the, they've more than doubled it, right? Way to completely undermine Dr. Christie government's patriarchy video. Uh, women have, are now more than double what they were in terms of their presence on boards. And whilst that's not perfect, and they've set this goal now of it being a third by you know, 33.333 dot, um, by 2020, um, and I think they could have been more sort of ambitious there, but even so, um, it's still a, a pretty good... Um, Pretty good news story, really. It's not as good as a laughing witch crying foul to her local news station, but still, it's a pretty good news story. And how that ties in, I think, into uh, the kind of uh, recent goings on and all the rest of it is that in our little corner of the internet, in our sort of atheisty little corner, it seems that the anti feminists hold too much sway, right? That they've they set the narrative and all the rest of it, and the, the, it, they, it can seem like you're fighting against this huge monolith, this kind of un, unbearable power or whatever. I hate to break it to you, but it probably only seems that way because you drank your own Kool-Aid. He then sends his army of hateful people to that Yelp page and um, fucked up by Thunderfoot and his hateful mob, and he revealed that to his 400,000 followers in essence, by Thunderfoot and his hateful mob, because it's been flooded with hundreds of messages from his hateful group, encouraging his army of fucking drone zombie pricks to go by stirring up his Anita Sarkeesian fucking haters. So Thunderfoot and his army of misogynist dickheads have driven another atheist female from the community, and then commands an army to go and harass people. But more importantly than that, he uh, weaponized and unleashed his bigoted hordes onto this company to try and help keep these innocent people in jobs, and to tell Thunderfoot and his ilk um, regarding the economic terrorism engaged in by Thunderfoot and the Thundermentalists. For the innocent people who have been fucked over by Thunderfoot and his mob of zombies. But actually that's not true in the real world, where it actually counts. Whilst they might you know, have big sort of voices in the YouTube atheism scene, out there in the real world, they're nothing. I mean, they're literally nothing. Even, you know, I mean, the, the government that, that did this, you know, had this um, plan to get up to 25% and now up to a third, is a conservative government who aren't feminist in the fucking slightest, but know that they have to do this sort of thing because feminism is, or feminists are having real successes in the world and actually do have real-world impacts, whereas these anti-feminists are essentially on the wrong side of history, on the wrong side of progress. That's a blanket generalization, you ignorant fuck. I'm as progressive as they come. I'm a huge supporter of gay rights and trans rights and all that shit. I am a huge supporter of equal rights, of equal opportunities. I oppose equity for equity's sake. And whilst they, they're big here, and we need to fight against them here. In the real world, they're fucking nothing. No cunt's ever heard of Thunderfoot in the real world. I mean, okay, no fucker's ever heard of me either. Um, but feminism in general and feminists have real world impacts, and these fuckers don't. Right, because um, safe spaces and uh, outlawing the challenging of ideas are huge, you know, impressive feminist achievements that we should all be proud of. I mean, look what happened when the uh, Justice for Men and Boys party stood in the general election. They got nowhere. They got absolutely fucking nowhere. And that's inequality we can all get behind. Um, so, yeah, um, we needn't get too downhearted about it. Um, and know this to the anti-feminists out there. You achieve nothing in the real world. You have your little fiefdoms here on the internet, but in the real world, you're nothing. Okay? Just bear that in mind. So anyway, I thought I'd sort of share that with you. Hopefully a, 
a message of positivity for everyone to take away. Um, because feminism's winning, and will continue to. Pip pip. Anti-feminists don't accomplish anything. Feminists are winning. <laughs> You know what the biggest difference between me and you is, Logan? I'm proud of my work. I'm proud of the things that I say. And do you know how I know that you're not proud of the things that you say? <laughs> well, it's simple. I'm willing to pay rapist odds, or rape victim odds, rather. You know, five to one. That says that you don't have what it takes to say that feminists are winning to a child bride from Yemen. That you don't have the cobbles to travel to Saudi Arabia and tell women who are legally relegated to second-class citizens all about the fantastic achievements that the women board members in your country have made. You want to say that anti-feminists accomplish nothing? <laughs> Maybe you should look in the mirror. No, seriously, you should look in the mirror more often. Well, I never planned an ending for this video. I was kind of hoping that something would just, uh, come about. And, um, now it's beginning to rain. So, you're not really getting a, a, a bonus to this one. Except for this.